Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use command buttons to navigate through records, close a form, or even open another form in your Microsoft Access database. We'll also run through the different options that are available on the command button wizard to see what else is in there. And then a little bit later on for the members in the extended cut, I'll show you how to resize buttons and your form height and change button captions and all kinds of other good stuff. Today's question comes from Asa from Brownsville, Texas, one of my gold members. Asa asks, is there any way to make navigation buttons on the bottom of a Microsoft Access form larger? I got a couple of people working for me who are older and aren't the best with a mouse. Sometimes clicking on those tiny buttons can be a challenge. I've made the labels and text boxes larger for them, but I can't seem to do anything about the navigation buttons. Can I make those buttons nice and big for them? Well, Asa, the bad news is you really can't control the size of the default built-in navigation buttons on the bottom of a form. But it's very easy to replace them with your own. Let me show you how. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download. It's on my website. You can grab a copy if you want to. I'll put a link down in the links section down below in the description. If you visit like the customer form here, for example, right down here on the bottom, these are the navigation buttons. And I cover these in my Access Beginner 1 class. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. It's four hours long, recently re-recorded for 2021. And I cover all the different ways to move through the records, including the navigation buttons down here. Now, these buttons are tiny. And I understand what you mean. I, I taught my grandma how to use the computer years ago, and she had pretty bad arthritis in her mousing hand, and so her, she would have a very difficult time sometimes getting, getting the mouse right on that button. So it'd be nicer if you could make big buttons. Plus, you got some people that are a little hard to sight. I know myself, I'm blind in one eye, so sometimes I have to kind of squint if I don't have the right glasses on. So it's nice to make those, those text boxes larger, right? the font larger, the buttons larger. Now, if you go watch the video where I create this blank template, and I strongly suggest you do, I'll put a link down below in the link section, go watch this, I show you how to make these buttons to open a form. Those are called command buttons, right? You can make buttons to close forms, all kinds of stuff. Let me show you real quick how to make a command button, then I'll show you how to replace the navigation buttons. Okay, so design view, here, I'm, uh, here I am on the main menu, all right? The customer form, in case you didn't watch that, you just go to the command button up here, click on that, drop it down here, click, all right? The command button wizard will start. Now, if it doesn't start, let me cancel this real quick. One of the questions I get all the time is, the wizard isn't starting. Drop this down, and right here it says control wizards. Sometimes people accidentally turn that off. In fact, in my developer classes, I usually do turn it off because I want to make buttons without having to always cancel the wizard. Okay, but for beginners, we want that wizard on. So click that on. All right, grab a button, drop it here. Command button wizard is a big menu full of options. We'll go through this in a little bit. I'll show you some of the different options that are in here. But the one I want to open a form is form operations, open a form, next, pick the form you want to open, like the customer form, next. Now you can open the form and find specific data to display. All right, I cover this in that, uh, in that blank template where I show you how to open up the contacts or, uh, or other related records to the customers. But for now, I'll just show all the records. Next. You can put text in there or a picture. I'll put a picture in this one. Next. All right, give it a meaningful name. Open Cust. I think, I, I think the other button's called Open Customer. So I'll just call this one Open Cust and then Finish. All right, and there's my little button. See? Close the form. Save changes. Open it back up again. And now I got a button. It's my own button. I can make it as big or as small as I want to, right? And that's the benefit of making your own buttons. So now I got a giant customer button. Boom, right there. Okay, now, how do we do this to replace the navigation buttons? Well, in the customer form here, we got these teeny little guys down here. All right, you got previous. Now, this is the previous, the first record, right? Next, last and new. There's command buttons to replace all of these guys. So let's see where those are. Right click, design view. Now you can turn off that little 
navigation bar on the bottom if you want to. All right, if you go to Format, Navigation Buttons, turn that off. Then close and reopen the form. Notice it's gone now. And if you turn off the horizontal scroll bar, then that bar goes away too. Watch this. Go to Properties, Scroll Bars, make this. Uh, for this form, we actually need neither, so just set it to neither. And now when I open it, look, that's gone. It's nice and clean. You don't see the little one of six down there because I got six records. Personally, I don't really care because I got my customer list form over here where I can see how many records there are. Okay. But if you want to see that, then I would recommend just leave the navigation bar on. All right. It doesn't hurt to have both the navigation buttons and your new ones. Right. You can leave that there too. But let's drop some of our own custom buttons down here. All right. Let's make this bigger. Make the detail section taller like that. Grab the bottom of that form. Or you could put it in the form footer if you want to. Right Right click up here. Turn on the form header and footer if you want to see those. I don't often use those unless I'm putting footer totals down here. So I'm going to turn that back off. The detail section is fine. Okay. Grab a button. Drop it down here. Record navigation. Here are your buttons. Find next. Find record. You can use, use those to find records. I got separate videos on that. I'll put links down below. Okay, go to first, go to next, or go to last, go to next, go to previous. Okay, I'll do two of them. You can easily do the rest. All right, I'm going to do go to previous and go to next. So here's previous, next. Do you want the picture or do you want text in it? I'm going to use a picture for these. Okay, next, give it a name, right? Previous record or prevrec, whatever you want to call it. That's just a name for the button itself. And then finish. And there's your button. Now, you can make this as big or as small as you want to for your people who don't click buttons well. And trust me, I know I've worked with those people before. I'll be there soon myself. I got really nasty carpal tunnel starting in my right hand from being a computer nerd since I was 8 years old. And I'm 48 years old, so that's a lot of mousing. Uh, <laughs> okay. I know what it's like. Even, even if I try to switch my mouse to my left hand, which I've done, like when my, those days when I used to do consulting, for example, I used to spend, you know, 14 hour days behind the computer and uh, easily. And, uh, you know, your hand starts to hurt after all that clicking and, and scrolling and moving. And so I would just, you know, so I, I tried a trackball from my left hand. That didn't work. Cause you get frustrated because you know how fast you can do things with your right hand. So using my left hand, you try to move the mouse around and if you're just not as accurate without practice. I, I, yeah, I, I know I could practice it and eventually get good with it, but... It's just a habit, you know, you're used to it. But but making the button bigger makes it easier to find and click on. All right, let's do another one. Button, drop it here. Record navigation, go to next record, right? Little picture, next. Let's call this next rec and finish or next rec button or whatever you want to call it. Slide it up over here. Make it like that, right? If you want to make sure these are exactly the same size, what I usually do, you can highlight these and go right-click and then size to widest. Yeah, there's all those tricks. But I just move it over this one and just size it appropriately and then slide it back. That's all. If you want to see if it's the same width or the same height, that's all you got to do. There's all kinds of tricks for making these things bigger and smaller. But you just do it by, I just do it by eye most of the time. Okay, but there's my nice big giant buttons. Now let's close this. All right. And then open it back up again. There you go. All right. Next. Previous. Oh, you can't go. See, if, you, if you're on the first record and you hit left, you can't go to the specified record. Okay, that's fine. All right. See? And then navigate through the records just like these guys do. Okay. One more button I always like to make, and that's the close form button. Put it over here. All right. We'll go um, form operations, close form. Next. You got the exit doorway or the stop icon here to pick from this kind of to me tells me like cancel but exit doorway is good there used to be a stop sign in older versions of access i used to like the stop sign you can put your own pictures in here if you want to with the browse button i'm not going to cover it today maybe i'll cover it in a future lesson if you guys want to see how they have to be bitmaps though windows bitmaps you have to save them as a bmp file and you want to kind of size them to be like this big beforehand all right and then uh and you can put whatever picture you want in there all right but for now next all right uh, let's call this uh close form and there's a little button. You can put that right next to the other one, like this. See that? And size it over that guy. See, it's a little bit too wide. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Put it right there. Eh. Okay. Look at that. See, it looks good. All right. Close it. 
save it, open it back up again, close it. See? See how easy these big buttons are? All right, and that's it. Now, let's take a look through the command button wizard. I cover most of these buttons in my beginner classes. My Access Beginner 7 class, for example, I go over a lot of this stuff. But let's just take a quick peek and take a rundown. Sometimes, I, I, me personally, when I'm learning something new, I like to just kind of get a brief overview first of what's available and then, and then dig deeper into it. That's kind of how I teach my classes, right? I give you a little like a basic overview of tables. Okay, now you know a little bit about tables. Then you go to queries and learn a little bit about queries and a little bit about forms, right? I don't teach you everything about tables first and then everything about queries. That's how most books are written. And I learned from books. If you buy a book off the shelf, most books are like, okay, this, this section's all on tables. All right, and we're going to teach you everything possible about tables before we even talk about queries. So I like, I like the breadth first versus the depth first approach to learning. So let me give you a brief overview of what's in here, and, and in future videos, we'll talk about more of this stuff. All right, record navigation we already talked about. Go to first, last, next, previous. Here's the find buttons. You can use these to find. All right, it's the same as if you, if you launch the find off of the, the, the toolbar up top here, the, uh, the ribbon. All right, and these buttons are usually designed for when you want to build a database and you want to secure it. All right, I've got lessons on securing your database too and how to, how to make it so that the, the users don't have access to this stuff, right? That you don't want them coming in here and poking around in your objects or having full access to the ribbon. So you lock your database down and then you make your own buttons for this stuff, okay? Record operations, right? Add a new record. That's the one that's missing from the navigation set down there, right? Add a new record goes to a blank new record. Delete, duplicate a record. I got a whole video on this. I'll put a link down below how to duplicate this record. All right, that's handy if you got someone, maybe a, you know, a, a spouse pair, but they each got their separate record. But you want to copy the address and phone number and all that other stuff. Um, print a record, right? Save the record. Saving the record just takes, because as you type in data into a form, you see the little pencil over there to indicate that it's dirty, right? It's not actually saved to the table until you move off of the record or refresh it somehow. That's what the save button does. Then there's undo, which means I'm going to cancel all the what I just did. Just hit escape on the keyboard or make yourself an undo button. Then we got form operations, right? Apply a filter. I got lessons on filtering. Close a form we just did. Open a form. All right. Open a form. You can open it and find specific records too. We talked about that briefly. Print a form. Usually I don't print forms. Reports are for printing. I mean, once in a while you might want to just quickly print something off that's on the screen, but usually you want to print reports. All right. Print the current form. Refresh the form data. All right. Report operations. Mail a report. Take a report and send it by mail as an attachment. Then you got open a report, which opens it in, in report view. And then you got preview report that opens it in print preview. Versus print report sends it straight to the default printer. So each of these buttons does something slightly different. Okay. Or you can send it to a file. All right. Quit application. This shuts access down. That's why I don't like using this guy for, for closing a form. And then some other stuff. Auto dialer goes back. This takes me back to like Access 95 when you used to have a modem in your computer. I actually used to use this for making sales calls because I'd bring up the customer's record, hit the auto dialer, and if you have a modem in your computer, then it would actually dial the phone. I'm surprised this button is still in Access. I kind of want to see what happens if I click on it. <laughs> but before I do, right, you got to print a table, which again, I almost never do. Run a macro, which will... I got whole classes on macros, but if you know how to program macros, there you go. You can launch it with these buttons here. And then, of course, open or run a query. This is good for, like, action queries, like append queries and stuff like that that change things. But, uh, yeah, I kind of want to see. Want to try something with me? I'm not, I haven't used this auto dialer feature in years. I just want to see what happens. All right, phone. Okay, and then finish. I want to see what happens when I click on that button. Let's see. Auto dialer, Okay. Okay, all right, so number. All right, let me put, uh, just for the hell of it, uh, just a random number. What's it going to do? Uh-huh, okay. Phone dialer was unable to find a telephone device or modem to use the phone control panel. Okay, so you'd have to install a modem. I, honestly, I haven't used a regular phone aside from my cell phone in probably 10 years. I don't have a house phone. I just, I got a cell phone. I got one. My girlfriend's got one, right? Um, I use Google Voice um, if I'm sitting at my computer because it just goes right through your computer. But uh, I would I'd be surprised if this works through um, 
like a voice mail system, if you've got that. I, I don't know. I, I haven't used this. I used to use it heavily in the 90s. Haven't used it since. So if that's the case, let's delete that button, right? And that's just as easy as clicking on it and hitting delete. And then save it and close it and open it back up. And let's get rid of this stupid little button out here. We don't need you. Goodbye. Save, close, open it up, customer form, and there's our big giant buttons. See? Now, a little little bit of... Uh, usually, I cover this kind of stuff in the extended cuts, which the extended cut's going to be fun for this one. I'm going to teach you how to resize these buttons. Not everybody wants these gigantic buttons down here. All right, I'll show you how to make them shrink up. Or you can even make them invisible if you want to. Um, and just, you know, if you've got people that prefer these... We could shrink these buttons up and then shrink up the form. Um, but design view, let's take a look at what goes into this button real quick. All right. So if you right click on that button, all right, and go to build event, which is off the top of the screen right now. Let me slide this down here. Right click, build event. See that? All right. That takes you into this thing. The command button wizard creates what are called embedded macros. Now, personally, I don't like macros. I prefer programming in VBA. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know this. I don't really care for macros, but the nice thing about macros is they're portable, all right? If you use the quote-unquote safe actions, which opening a form is, things that are only inside of access, right, that you can't really affect other files on the computer, are generally considered safe actions, and you can see what all of the actions are by clicking on this. However, you can distribute your database to other people without them having to worry about security warnings if you stick to all the safe actions in the macros. So I do have classes on macros for that purpose, to teach people how to use these things. But you can see the commands here, right? On error, it gives you an error message. Go to record, right? If macro error is not this, message box that, okay? So that's basically what the wizard builds for you, is this little macro, all right? That's all. Just want to give you a little preview, right? Right-click, build event. You can see what's in there. That's just close window, the close window command. Okay? So that's how you use these buttons to navigate through your records and your form. Now, in the extended cut, I'm going to show you how to resize these buttons with another button. Watch this. Click, makes them small. See? And it shrunk the form up. See? Click again, make it big, small. See? Big and small. Also, watch this text box right here. Make it big, bigger text, bigger box. See? Big and small. Watch this notepad right here. Click, and it gets bigger. See? click off of it, and it gets smaller. And yeah, I wasn't exact with all the sizes. We were just playing around, but I'm showing you how to do all this stuff, right? Big and small. And if you have user logon set up, like if you follow my security video and you set up so that when people log on, you know who they are, then you can set these preferences automatically when they, when they open up the database. All right? But the extended cut, I show you how to do all this stuff here. Resize these buttons, move them around, right? Change the form size, change the font size here, change this box. It's all in the extended cut silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos there's lots of them now so check it out how do you become a member click the join button below the video after you click the join button you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos live video and chat sessions and more Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. 
It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.